Welcome to Creating with Gorilla Art. My name is Miss Tiffany and I am here to teach you how to paint a winter barn. This is a fun favorite favorite one I've done in the past and I brought it back this year just because I just it's one of my favorites and I hope you enjoy it too. Let's talk about all the supplies you're going to need for this canvas. Okay. So this is the way our kit comes. It's all wrapped up but you can see the colors that we're going to need today. Today we're going to need green, white, red, yellow, turquoise, black, and then I have a super fun sparkly glitter right in there. You're going to need a sponge. You're gonna need four brushes today. We've got a round tip, a fine tip, a flat tip, and our splatter down there. A paper plate, that's gonna be our palette that we're gonna put all our paint on. You're also going to need a water bowl to wash your brushes in. This is dirty, make sure you have fresh water. <laughs> a water bowl, a paper towel, and you probably will need a blow dryer handy because I do ask you to blow dry uh, your painting throughout, throughout, the, um, throughout the lesson. Then you're going to get this canvas. This one is a blank canvas. It doesn't have anything drawn on it because I'm gonna show you how to draw that barn. Are you ready to get started? I know I am. Why don't you go ahead and grab all your supplies and meet me back here for the lesson. All right, so we've got our blank canvas here and we're gonna start off by putting just the background in and it's not gonna take too long. It's a super simple process. We're gonna be using a sponge, but we're going to be painting gray. And so what I wanna get started first, I've just got the black and white, as you know that that makes gray. And we're gonna mix that together. One of the mistakes I see a lot happen is that people mix the gray too dark. We don't want this to be really dark. We want it to be a super light gray. So I've got more white paint that I haven't put on my um, palette. So that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it right into this white paint. Make sure you, you save your white. You don't pour all your white on here. And if you did already, just start a new little pile of white and, and black. I use the tiniest, tiniest amount of black. When you're mixing, you wanna keep your circles small. If you start getting really big, you know, then you're gonna waste paint. It's very, we want a very, very light gray. Take a look at that. It's pretty light. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it up with my sponge and we're just going to get it all covered in. I'm going to cover the whole thing. And then we're going to put texture in after we get it all covered. But I want to first, first get it in. It doesn't matter too much which direction you go right now because like I said, this is just the background. You do wanna make sure you get your sides of your canvas, the top and the edge. So I've got it pretty covered. It may be hard to see. It's very light, which I like. And now I'm going to pick up that gray again and I'm gonna come back in. Do you see how my wrist is just going back and forth? Back and forth. And I'm gonna cover this whole thing back and forth, just like this. May have to make some more gray. Let me do a little, mix a little gray. Back and forth. Almost a crisscross you can do too. You just wanna have this very wispy painting. Do you see that? Back and forth. until you got it all covered. Now right here, I probably shouldn't have spent too much time. I'm not spending too much time because your barn is gonna cover that up. So when you're getting this texture in, I'd spend a little more time in this area and like leave this area. Don't worry about it too much. And as 
I know it's hard to pick up on camera, but I really have some very wispy brush strokes happening in there, or sponge strokes, I should say. Let's see. I'm gonna bring it above the light. I don't know. It's hard to tell. All right. So I'll I'll snap a picture of it a close up right now. I've got all that fun little texture happening in there. I can't put that down the wrong way. What I'm going to do now is just add a little white. So this is that reserved white that I saved and I didn't put on my plate. I'm gonna add a little bit fresh. I still have more in there for later. So I have that little bit right there. And I'm gonna just dip straight in the white and come in here and continue doing those little dashes. Just like this. And I'm gonna do the whole thing. All over. And remember, I'm not gonna worry too much right there where the barn's gonna be. But I just love the way this looks because it kinda looks like a little windstorm happening. You definitely want to see the texture. I'm kind of dabbing and doing a little crisscrossy. Now I'm going to dip. I've got it all. See that? Now I'm going to dip slightly, and I do mean slightly, into the blue. And I'm just going to do some very light dashes with the blue and I, I'm not re-dipping. Look at how I dipped once and I'm just doing it because we don't really want the background blue. We just want to see some hints of it. A little bit more. I'm barely dipping and I'm dipping it right on the side that's got the gray paint in it already. And I just am softly going over it. You know, the key is not to overthink it. I have too many people over the years of doing this that I can tell are the perfectionist, you know, and I know that you, they're, you're watching now, the perfectionist, and it's not supposed to be perfect. It really isn't. It's just supposed to be a whisper of blue. See that? It's not solid blue just almost like a little windstorm happening. And we're gonna come back in. Actually, I will come back in now with a little white. And I'm gonna come in, do some white. Right on top of that. Especially if yours got too blue or something. Come in, do some more white. I like that. Just dip, dip, dip. Dab, dab, dab. Like I said, I didn't worry about this too much over here. Okay, so now we've got it painted. I saw it in the camera a little bit right there. We've got it nice and painted. The background looks great. This is a good time for you to catch up with what I'm doing now and then pause me or pause me now and then blow dry it really good. And then we're gonna come back in and put the next layer on. So I'll catch you in a minute. Welcome back. So we have it dry to the touch and that's gonna help us um, be able to do some drawing. So let's look at our picture that our that we're doing today. So our barn is pretty big. Look at how much bigger it is than my hand. See that? You definitely want your barn to be wider and bigger than your hand. In fact, if we're looking at the canvas, it takes up three quarters of the, cam of the canvas. Okay, so we're gonna start our barn way over there. But before we do our barn, I am going to come in and put our, our landline in here. 
and I would say it's also a quarter and we're just kind of lightly drawing you don't need to press too hard I know it might be hard for you to see mine so I apologize but if you take your hand you can see it's a little it's not not as high up as the tip now if you got a really large hand you know you might have to gauge but I would say it's about right there on your canvas and I'm gonna just establish like where I want to start my barn like I said it's pretty big so it's almost if you were to draw down it almost be a perfect square like how long this is to how far over does that make sense so I'm gonna draw a dark dark line so you can see it gosh you guys can't see too much I'll go over I could go over with Sharpie I'll think about it all right so we're gonna our barn is actually gonna start lower on our horizon line it's gonna come down just a little bit so if that's our line it comes down and then we're going to draw our barn all the way up here and all it is is a nice straight line doesn't even have to be perfect okay so you're gonna find the middle and I would say it's about right there and I switched over to using chalk because I think you can see it better so I did draw it in there now when you're using your pencil just draw it super gently in case you need to make a an erasing or you've got a mistake or anything so I'm gonna draw my chalk and I'm drawing harder so you can see it all right this is the middle of our barn because this is the edge middle we're gonna come over here and draw a little, it's almost like a T. Do you see it? Just like that. And then I'm gonna draw, oops, let me get on that right. Too soft, there we go. And then I'm gonna draw two lines going down. And that is the top of my barn. If you have chalk I'll tell you chalk is super easy so now you can erase this top line right there and I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna leave this line in here because let me show you the regular picture or the picture we're gonna have barn doors in there so I'm just gonna leave it there for now and that was the hardest thing we're going to be doing today is getting that barn established. And once we get the paint in, uh, then I'm going to jump over and show you some other things. So let's get to painting once you've got that barn in. I'm going to start off with my bigger brush. Dry it real good in case you got it wet. Just make sure it's dry. And we're going to start putting in that barn. Okay. This is my little easy method. If you've ever taken my classes, you've heard me say it a thousand times, but what I like to do is get real close to the line and then I press and I drag. So press and drag. Now we're gonna be doing two coats of this barn. So it doesn't matter too much on how you paint it, I wouldn't paint it crazy. I would try to do some nice long strokes. Press and drag. I like to do personally all the edges first. And then I fill in. So I think from this point, I'm gonna start like this and I'm just gonna go back and forth all the way down. We're gonna do two coats, like I said. So if you don't cover every inch of it, that's fine. What I do wanna make sure that you do is that you're spreading your paint out. I don't wanna see any, um, or you don't wanna see any clumps of paint. So no clumps, just back and forth. I just love the red barn 
my niece got married in a red barn. And I'll tell you what, it was just the most beautiful, beautiful wedding. There was lights and I don't know, it was just gorgeous. So I guess I'm not gonna worry too much about that chalk line because it's gonna get painted in, but that's okay. There we go. I got it all done. So this is a good time to blow dry it, pause me, get caught up, and then blow dry it really good. And then we're gonna go on to the next step. So see you in a sec. So welcome back. I got mine all dried. I'm gonna clean my brush super good. It might be a good idea to change your waters too, you know, between, because you don't want any red left on that brush but I'm just pouncing it on the bottom of my water bowl and then wiping it, seeing how much, you know, paint is left. Hopefully I've got it clean. And I'm just gonna pick up right here. We're gonna do our first little base coat of snow. And I'm just doing it back and forth. I'm gonna do a lot of snow, but want to get it in. Be careful in case you didn't get every little bit dried by your barn. I can tell that this is a little wet, I bet you. You have to be very careful. All right. Good. Okay, so we're going to come in and we're going to put in that other coat of paint for our barn. Like I said, we were going to do a couple, a couple, couple coats. And so I've switched over to my flat brush here. And it is important at this point, how the direction that you're going to paint it. So this also is a great one to drag, press and drag because it'll really get even closer than that other brush that you used. Something about the flat brush. Just press and drag. And I'm gonna do all the edges right now, again. And now I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna go back and forth. Because it's hard to tell, but there is a texture that you are putting in there with your paint. And our barn, you know, has the wood Flats. So we're painting in that direction, which is side to side. Now up in here, or down here, I should say, I believe our wood slats are going to go up and down. So everything from this point I did side to side, and now I'm doing up and down. And you, you really can't see it, but it, it is a texture that will be there more apparent when we start adding some more stuff. So it's important on the way you, the direction you paint, definitely. Up and down. perfect time get caught up blow dry it really good because next we're going to be putting in all our little barn details and you're not going to want to miss it catch you back in a sec so welcome back so let's grab our chalk and let's look at our picture here so we've got to put in our 
little square right there and that's where our barn doors are going to be. So I'm going to start in that middle, the looking, eyeballing it kind of where the middle is. And it's a little more than a square, more, more of a rectangle. But I just want to draw that on there. Okay. Let's see. And then I'm going to put our barn door is going to have those classic crisscrosses in there. And then I'm just going to draw in where like I want my circle to be for my wreath. Actually, I think that's too high. Well, maybe not. We'll keep it there. Now, I saw of another picture that kind of inspired me that was a little different than this one. And what they added and I'll let you completely decide if you want to do this or not. But what they added was a little sign above the door and it said, you know, Merry Christmas. Da -da 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 -da. And I thought that could be fun. So I'm going to let you decide if you want to add that in. I might put it on this one so you can see, but for right now, take that off. We'll add it in at the very end. All right, so I feel really happy with that. And now we're gonna come in and we're gonna show some how to put in some texture and just some little lines that give that illusion that we've got a barn happening. So we are going to be using the flat brush. You wanna make sure it's dry and I like to pinch it so that the tips get very close together, okay? And we're gonna be coming in and just painting some darkness around there, but I don't want it to be solid, solid black. So actually with another brush, with my other brush, I'm gonna add a little yellow, a little red, and I've got myself an orange, and now I'm gonna add black to that. And what that's doing is it's giving me kind of a dark brown really dark it almost it almost looks probably looks black on the camera but it's it's not quite black I'll give you a real close-up so you can see it it's pretty dark so putting that in and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna very quickly kind of wisp in edges and I really want you to notice that I'm not doing it this perfect straight detailed line this is more of an impression all right of a barn if you look at these lines they're not like these perfect lines they're more like a barn that you would see in a distance that you don't see exactly what's going on but you know something's going on the lines are kind of there. So I'm gonna come in. And I'm just gonna draw these very gentle lines going like that. You're gonna have snow all on, up on the top of that, so I wouldn't, you know, matter too much. And like I said, you're gonna have we're gonna have some slats going like this down. And I have very little paint on my brush. I've only dipped it in twice, once to do that, once to do that. Now I've got hardly anything. And I'm just going to do some little lines going straight down like that with hardly any paint. This is almost, it is a dry brush technique. So I've dipped it in this paint here, but I'm going to wipe some of it off. I don't want to have tons of paint. I'm going to do some lines going across like this. Very gentle. See the lines there? Very little paint. It's a dry brush technique. Now I'm going to do another line as if I'm kind of painting in the slats.
We might do a couple going across like that. Very light paint. Oopsie, I didn't wipe it. And see how much darker that got? You can't tell, but I'm gonna show you. I don't want it that dark. I want it this dark here, right there. But that's okay, I will just come in a little later and fix that. So tap, 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 and then I wipe a little bit. flat side of your brush and just do this I have no paint I've added nothing I'm wiping it it gives you this cool little texture in there it's so important though like I just dipped in the paint here it is so important that I now wipe it off and then I come back in and I'm using the flatter side and it gives us cool text texture. So when I did these lines here, I used the skinny side, but when I'm coming in and putting some color and definition in there, details, I'm using the flat side. And I'm really pleased with how it's looking. Now if you get too much black, like I just did there, I'm just gonna come back over with a little red, and soften it up a little, because that's just too dark. And don't overwork it. Now I'm gonna dip in to that same kind of brownish color and I'm gonna come in and I'm going to gently paint in these lines right over the chalk. I'm not wiping my brush, I'm doing it straight, straight on. Just like that. Now I'm doing the flat side to create these crisscrosses. I don't want tons of paint on my brush, but I'm not wiping it. Just don't scoop it too much. There we go. Starting to look like a barn, isn't it? That's fun. All right, so I've, I've got a little paint left on and I am wiping a little bit and then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put in, see that's too dark, wipe some more. Um, just putting in some texture in the middle. I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna wet my brush, see if I can't smear that around a little bit. If you get it too dark, that's what you do. You just wet it. Wet it a little bit. Smear it around. Just want it to look old and weathered. And I think that's looking really good. I mean, the, this is the most detailed. Just wiping that. That looked a little dark for me. I'm just wiping that off. We'll come back to that later. So that's pretty good. That's a great, you know, head start to our um, our barn. Although, as I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna do some dry brushing under here because if you think a little bit of a shadow might have been cast. So and once again, the dry brushing is dipping it in the paint, the paint and then wiping off just coming in here right underneath like I said you're gonna have a lot of snow happening so it doesn't matter too much all right all right so get caught up with that give it a good blow dry and then meet me back here so 
what we're going to do is we're going to be letting that just settle up and we're going to switch over now to doing our tree. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm using my round brush. So I'm cleaning it really good. I think I'm going to turn this over since I did so much wiping on it. Okay. And I have a pretty easy way that I, I like to do my trees. I like to start at the top. And I like to do these little wisps all the way down, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have it a little taller than our barn. So I like to start with just the green. I'm gonna go just down to about there. Just doing green here. Remember your tree is gonna be always fatter at the base. And you won't see these that line too much, but I just want to establish that line in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I like to start, we're going to do a little double dip. Okay. So I double dip in the green, more in the green, see, and a tiny bit of the yellow. Let me do that again. The yellow got dried out. So definitely more green than yellow. And I like to always swoop down and out down and out. You don't want to paint in. Okay. Think about it like hair growing or the leaves are growing out, right? The branches are growing out. You should paint that way as well. So I start off with these little, they almost look like a little mustache. See? And I'm just going to start. And as I go down, they get a little wider. Do be careful though, because I see too many people go real wide right away and then you don't, you know, that it's too fat up in here. So you may start off with them looking very close together. See there, it's such a small gradation of it getting wider. And I'm just starting in the middle and out wisping and my brush kind of comes up. You can practice on another piece of paper if you need to. And here I go. All the way down. It's definitely getting wider now at this point. This is going to have a lot of snow on it too. So really, you can't make too many mistakes with this. Okay. I'm just adding a little more texture in there. And then you can always kind of come back and do a couple more with just solid green. But like I said, we're putting snow in there, so you're not going to see too much of this. I'm going to leave a little bit down there. And then I'm going to have one back here, too, that's kind of color that you'll barely be able to see that's behind our our barn and I think I think we're gonna have one over here too so like that I just did these little wisps going out I'm not I'm gonna come over here and continue it you know, this is a good point. As I pull this over, I realized that we should have painted this red. So I'm going to take this time and paint it red. And don't go all the way down because remember, this is snow down there. Clean my brush real quick. And get a little bit of white down. There. I'm looking at it. I want my, I actually want my tree to come out a little bit more. So I'm going to make these branches come in right in front. And that means I'm going to pull this down just a little bit on it way bigger. Now what does that do? It gives the illusion that this tree is in front of our barn 
and that's because we we brought this down just a little lower than that that helps give that illusion and then we painted it on top so we have one tree in front and then we'll have those trees in back so while we have green on our brush we're going to come in here and do our little holly berry and I like to use just the tip and I like to do these little I'm going to bring you closer okay so I'm going to I've got my little circle in there and you can actually if you're nervous about it I can sort of see mine draw it in but my little leaves are gonna go just like we did this but imagine they're just these little tiny ones going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's like little leaves that I'm doing. If I'm gonna switch over, it might help you also to switch over to your skinnier detail brush. And I'm just doing these little back and forth, back and forth. They actually go all different directions. little leaves going out you're not going to be able to see them too detailed okay because don't forget you're looking at this barn from a distance so you're not going to see all these details but you do know that there's some leaves happening so that I'm not pressing hard brush strokes to make it look like leaves. See? I'm pretty pleased with that. I am going to double dip a little bit with yellow and do some yellow in there too. Yellow just adds a little bit of contrast in there and helps those leaves have some texture. So double dipping in the yellow and a little bit in the green and doing some little leaves right on top of those ones. You don't want it to be like fully yellow though. You want it to blend in with that green, just giving you a little different look. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the very bottom of my brush and I'm gonna dip it into red. And guess what? It's gonna give me these really pretty little berries. And I'm going to do them all over the leaves. Just double dipping and then, not double dipping, just dipping with the bottom of your brush. It gives you that really cool little, little berries. I think I'm going to do a bow up there though. So I'll come back to that. We're gonna add snow to this as well. So I'm gonna blow dry this really good, especially this pot here, because I wanna put in our, a bow, dry in all these other things, and then we'll get back to the next step. So meet you back here in a sec. Okay, so I've got this dry, and I'm gonna just put in a little, a little rounded square right there. And then those two little side things for a bow. And a little thing like that. Okay, so we've got my bow. You know, the other one I painted did not have a bow. So we are going to see how this comes out. Because it's got to be red, we're going to have to do some outlining so that it pops off of our canvas. So I've got my detail brush and I'm just dipped in the red and I'm filling these in. Definitely going to have to outline them because you won't see it. Okay, 
sharpening my brush and I'm going to just outline them. I'm not pressing hard. If you press too hard with your brush, it'll your line won't be as skinny as it can be. Yeah, that's you can definitely see it. doing very dry brushing right there and then I've got to turn it just so I can get a better angle but I am gonna do a little thing up there and what that does is it gives that illusion that it's three-dimensional see that little bow that's cute so the white is just where I drew it. And so once you blow dry it, you can come back in and take off all of that, that little white that you may or may not like. So I'm cleaning my brush really good. And we are going to start adding snow. So this is where our little splatter brush comes in, see? So I love to use this for adding that real texture and I like to pounce with it so this is my snow I've dipped it in white and I'm just pouncing and I'm even gonna do a little bit like that and doesn't that give that wonderful illusion of snow and a little bit I dipped in it and it went a long way look at one dip And it really went a long way. Now I did include a little bit of that glitter for you. So this is a good time to just sprinkle a little bit of that glitter on there. And where else would you find snow that kind of piled up? Maybe a little bit on this wreath very gently pressing on it because I don't want it to overtake it you know but you got to put it right where you kind of think that it would pile up and so I would think that it would pile up on these doors right maybe even like right in the middle definitely on top you know what I want to add are the barn door handles. I forgot about that, but let's add that in there. And your snow should be kind of lumpy and bumpy. Should not be, you know, exactly the same. As you figure, it's kind of just collecting, you know, as it falls. So up here, I've got to do some snow. Oh, it's looking cute. All right, so again, we're gonna just do the same thing here. I'm just pouncing. I don't wanna cover up my tree exactly, but I also, look at how I'm doing it. I'm kind of doing it along the branches in that, as if it's kind of resting on those branches. So I'm mimicking the movements, you know, when we swept it, I'm mimicking those except pouncing. Just like that. Do you figure it's gonna catch right on the tips? And you want to be able to see that green so that you know it's a tree, not just this blob of, of white, right? Just pouncing. I'm gonna do the same things on these. Pounce, pounce, pounce. Now, 
I'm gonna take some of that gray. I have a tiny bit left in there and I'm just gonna put some texture back in here with that gray and just pouncing it. I, I needed very little to do this, but I just wanted the ground to have a little more definition in it than just this solid white. That's why I like the gray in there. So I kind of put that gray in. Now I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna put the white. And because you have that gray a little bit in there, you can see a little definition. Do you see that? Having that definition, having a little bit of those colors offers some texture and you definitely need some texture. And you don't want to cover up every single spot. Like I said, you want that gray to kind of poke through. So pretty. Oh, I'm pretty happy. We're almost done. I want to do, I want to add those little handles that I forgot. And I'm also thinking I might make the base of that tree a smidge darker. All right. So I'm going to be using my flat brush and in that mixture that we had done the brown, I'm just going to put a couple little, little lines in there as if that's a handle. I'm happy with that. So what I want to do real quick is mix up and make a brown, a lighter brown than this one. Okay, so yellow and red make orange and to orange you want a little bit of black not a lot because it will overtake it like even that got too dark so add a little more yellow here we go yeah and I'm gonna wipe my brush I don't want it too dark yeah was going to add a little bit. I don't like it up. All right. Clean my brush. And look at I'm making a little, just a little bit of something, something growing right there. All right. We are in the final stretch. I really am very pleased. I think it's so cute. Now, like I said before, if you wanted to add a little Merry Christmas, you could do that right there. I'm going to let it be, but I am going to do my very, very favorite thing in the world next to glitter anyways. Oh, well, speaking of glitter, how can I forget? You're going to get that little glitter. Oops. And I want you to come in clean my brush. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. Clean my brush. And I'm just going to, I want this glitter to be pounced here and there. So it'll be kind of a shiny little reflection that make, gives that illusion that it is, in fact, snow, right? Because snow kind of glistens. Now I'm not painting it and I'm not covering every inch. I'm just pouncing it the same way we did the snow and I'll pounce in a few, you know, spots up on the snow. And of course, a little bit on the tree itself. It's maybe hard to see, but it does glisten and it's stunning. Oh, that's cute. I like that a lot. Okay. So now the last thing, which is my favorite, so wipe that a little chalk on it. We are going to splatter on it. This is a good time before we splatter is to clean off any chalk marks. Cause you don't want the chalk on once you splatter drying my brush super duper good dipping into the white and then i'm going to just 
bang it like this and then what we're getting is snow. Oh, I might have to get my fingers dirty. That's okay. That's so cute. And I'm definitely gonna do it over the barn because we figure it might snow right on top of that barn. Very nice. I love it. I love the splatter. A little more. You can never have too much. And then the last thing you want to do is add your name. I'm going to be using my skinny little brush. I'm going to put my initials down here. TB. And that's it. There. Now you can see it. All finished I love the way this one came out and I did add the bow let me show you the other one I think the bow just gives it a little something something and I do like that quite a bit I hope you enjoyed painting this and maybe you'll find another painting you want to paint along with me please don't forget to share these pictures share it on Instagram and tag me I would love love to see how these came out I think that would be really fun to see anyways you guys have a wonderful holiday season and I look forward to creating with you on the next creating with grill art bye